Hey friends, Marcus Sheridan back with you for our Digital Sales Mastery Series. This is lesson two, and hopefully you have seen lesson one because this is a follow-up. In lesson one, we talked about the power of assignment selling and how if we intentionally, as sales professionals, integrate content into the sales process, how that'll help shorten sales cycles while increasing closing rates because we help the buyer move through that buyer's journey so much faster. We discussed what it should look like, but now we're gonna talk about what are the pieces of content that work the best when we're doing assignment selling with prospects, especially early in that sales cycle, that sales process. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Number one piece of content that is incredibly powerful is cost and price content. Now, before you say, there's no way we can discuss cost and price, although I know some of you do, some of you do not. Hopefully you read They Ask, You Answer my book and you'll see an entire section on the psychology of discussing cost and price on your website. With that being said, let's just say this. You don't have to say your exact price for the sake of this conversation, but here's what you gotta do for this particular piece of content. There's four components of a great cost price piece of content that we want our prospects to read early in that sales process. Number one, what drives cost up for that particular product or service in the industry? Number two, what keeps the cost or price down? Number three, what makes some companies more expensive? Number four, what makes some companies less expensive? Okay, so those are the four components. Now, as you might imagine, by doing this, what drives cost up, what drives cost down, why are some companies more expensive, why some companies are less expensive? The reason why this is so important is because it defines what value looks like in the industry. It establishes a foundation of value. So then later on, when you present your price or your proposal or whatever that thing is, even if you've already done it, now they understand why something is what it is. So this is one of those very important ones to introduce early. It's great to do it. And we find because it has to do with cost and price, Many people will take the time to review it, whether it's an article or a video, so that's number one. Number two piece of content to use in your assignment selling is the classic how to choose how to buy, what to look for content. What I mean by that is, let's be hypothetical. Let's say somebody is buying us, uh, looking to buy their, choose the right CRM for their business, right? And so by producing some type of thorough checklist that talks about all the boxes that you should check off when you're vetting companies and vetting CRMs so as to make sure you choose the right one, that's very, very powerful. Because not only are they gonna use that ideally with you, because they're gonna check the boxes with you, but they're gonna use it with your competitors as well. So we wanna get that to them early in, the, in that sales process once they have reached out to us because there's a very good chance they're reaching out to others and we want them having something that's written down where they can say they've got it, they don't have it, they've got this, they've got this, they don't have this and they've got this so the value is here, right? So that's the second piece of content we wanna use in our assignment selling. And then the third piece of content that you wanna use in your assignment selling, which most companies do not have, but it's very, very powerful, is the classic who we are and who we're not a good fit for. So once again, let's use the simple CRM example. So let's say your company has a particular CRM that you offer. It's critical that we talk about what are the problems that it solves, who's it for, but we get very specific about who is this not a good fit for. Now, you might say, why is that? Because the moment you're willing to say what you're not, is the moment you become dramatically more attractive to those who you are a good fit for. That's the power behind this. And the more transparent companies are with this, the more somebody that is aligned with fit is gonna say, that's exactly what I wanted, that's exactly who I'm looking to work with. So those are the three pieces of content. Cost, really defining value in the industry, the what to look for when you're purchasing this thing, and then finally, who we are and who we're not a good fit for.
These are things that they're not going to be getting from the competitor. And remember, when you do this in your assignment selling, the salesperson needs to say, hey, I've got three things that I want you to review before our first meeting. Now, what are these things and why am I asking you to do this? Well, number one, I'm giving you a complete guide on cost and price in this industry. Why some companies are expensive. Why some companies are cheap. This way, you're going to understand as you're researching what you're seeing and why it's costing what it's costing. I've also got this incredible checklist as to the things that you should be looking for, questions that you should be asking that you're probably not asking right now when you're talking to other vendors. That's in this checklist and it's gonna help you whether you do business with us or not. And then finally, I have a video that I'm sending you that talks about who we are and who we're not a good fit for. Because here's the thing, if you're not a good fit for us, we want you to know that on the front end. And we want you to also see that we're more transparent than anybody else in our space. Would you take the time to review these things before our appointment on Friday? And that's the assignment selling. They're gonna say, yes, that makes a lot of sense. And can you imagine if they actually consume that content before the meeting? It's gonna be dramatically more productive, more effective. But if we just send them something without explaining it, without getting the commitment, it's not gonna be the same. So hopefully now you see the full picture of assignment selling. You see what it is. You see how to do it. You see why it matters so very much. And again, I wanna remind you, I have seen companies around the world, I've helped them apply this. It works regardless of the size of the sales department. The key though is that the marketing department is producing the right content, right? The sales department is aware of its existence. They know where to find it and they know how to present it. And that my friends is the essence of assignment selling.